We began with your money, and who better to talk to about that than Bob Dahl? He's Nuveen's chief equity strategist and senior portfolio manager. And Bob, uh, you focus on the fundamentals. You say they remain solid, and if that's the case, are you bullish? Yeah, I'm constructive. Uh, look, we've come 12% uh, in about uh, three weeks, so uh, some of the good news is back in the markets. Granted, we dug a big hole to begin to climb out of. I think it gets harder for the market from here, fundamentally and technically, but I I'm constructive on the economy as our predictions uh, uh, outline, Charles. Well, we, we've get, we have mixed economic data, right? Um, most of it is the, the big stuff, though, has been good. Job growth, strong. Wages, strong. We had a pretty good Philadelphia Fed uh, number yesterday. So, so where does that put us vis-a-vis -vis the headwinds that were holding us back last year, particularly the Federal Reserve? So the Fed's um, uh, data-dependent, quote-unquote, and the data, as you point out, are coming in pretty good. So at some point this year, I hope they have reason to raise rates because that would mean the economy is doing well. If they don't, then the earnings picture is not as good as we think. Uh, let's hope they pass uh, on the next just to show they are data dependent as right. opposed to we're going to move every meeting uh, as they've been. And uh, I think the market would view that favorably. Now, there's a lot of wild cards out there, including this government shutdown now in week three. Uh, just how negative will this be for the economy as it drags on? Yeah, the longer it lasts, obviously, the more negative it is. Most economists uh, say that uh, every uh, week or two is another tenth of a point of GDP off. So if we have this thing two months, that's uh, half a percent of GDP. That's real money, Charles. So uh, let's hope they can, uh, cooler heads can prevail and then get off the playground and, uh, you know, come to some uh, you, terms. But by the same token, if, 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 does that majority of that come back, though, later, uh, you know, that pent-up demand? Uh, does that money come back later on to sort of equal, equalize it all? Yeah, great question. Some of it for sure comes back, and those effects are hard to estimate. But, of course, the longer it lasts, the more damage you do, and you can't predict the, uh, the knock-on effects. You know, suppose uh, the TSA workers say, you know what, I'm not getting paid, I'm not going to work. Then we have a, a massive uh, gray cloud over the economy because people can't fly, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not saying that's going to happen. But what I'm saying is there are unintended uh, consequences if we don't uh, take care of this thing before long. All right. And, of course, one of the other big wild cards is trade. Uh, you say both Trump and Xi will finalize a deal because they both want a political win. I guess it's just how do you make it look to your side, to your constituents, that you won? Yeah, that's the hard part. Uh, I would emphasize, again, I think they both need a political win. So I think in the next few months we'll have some sort of a deal, something done. But... I'm worried, Charles, there's not going to be a whole lot of substance there. Uh, I, I think if there's some agreement and they say we're going to keep talking to fix other things, the market will be happy with that. Uh, we're not going to get this all done overnight. It's a very long process. These are complicated issues. A couple of months isn't long enough. All right. We just got the Michigan sentiment number in, 90.7, uh, 98.3 uh, last month. This is well below uh, Wall Street's e estimate here. Uh, Maybe this is starting to reflect some of the things. That the street was looking for 96.4, Bob. So, uh, you know, I haven't had a chance to go through the details of it. But is this the sort of thing that we were worried about? Yes, exactly, Charles. You, you, you put enough things out there for people to get nervous about and uncertain about, and their confidence level inevitably begins to drop. The stock market declined, the government shut down, uncertainty around trade. We've got to make some progress in these things for people to feel good and spend money. All right. Then. And the last one, of course, you're well known for your predictions and you have uh, 2019 predictions. And the one, of course, that we looked at them, the one that stands out the most to us is your prediction on this 2020 presidential race. Can you explain it to the audience? Yeah, the prediction, folks, is that uh, the Democrats have a double digit number of people run for president. That's consensus. And that President Trump is challenged from within his own party. That's obviously not consensus. We've gone out on a limb. I have no inside information. It just seems to me that with his struggle in the polls, his bolstering his base, but inability seemingly to want to broaden his base. That's going to be necessary if he's going to have a shot at getting Pennsylvania and Ohio and Michigan and Wisconsin again. And enough Republicans may see that and say, you know what, maybe we need to challenge him.
I don't know. We'll see. You don't have any ideas who that might be. I mean, we know the, the, the never Trumpers. <laughs> we know a lot of folks who left uh, D.C. with the intent, perhaps, on reclaiming the party. Uh, you know, I think it's a tall order for them to win, uh, to, for anybody in the Republican side to beat President Trump in the primary. I do not disagree with that at all. Uh, we also, sadly for uh, the Republicans, know that when incumbent presidents get challenged for them in their own party, they rarely win re-election. So I, I'm not predicting anything. I'm just making some observations. Right. But I think you're right. Taking the nomination away is going to be hard. You know, Bob, you, you started out saying two dozen uh, Dems, and then when you mentioned that last stat, I got a feeling it's going to be four dozen. <laughs> so we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. It'll be wild. It'll be wild. Hey, we always appreciate your expertise. Thank you very much. All the best.